Before we start implementation of real coded genetic algorithm, we must discuss about the general structure of a real valued optimization problem. We're going to minimize the value of a function f of x, and we know that x is a structure which contains these elements x1, x2, up to xn, and we know that all of these members, all of these elements, are real numbers. Actually, they have their specific range from lower bound of the ith variable up to upper bound of the same variable. We may have different ranges for different decision variables. And here, in this search space, we must define these two operators to make the genetic algorithm possible to solve these types of problems. The first one is crossover. How we can do crossover on this dummy? And the second one is the mutation. How we can mutate a solution like this? So we're going to discuss about the real coded crossover operators and real coded mutation operators. First, let's talk about the crossover in continuous domain. Let's assume that we have two parents, x1 and x2, and they contain some elements, x11, x12, up to x1n, these are our parents, x21, x22. These are our parents, and we must create two of the springs, which equals to y11, y12, and y1n and y2 equals to y21, y22, up to y2n, and these are offsprings. To perform crossover on these two parents and to get these two offsprings, we can use a similar process to binary uniform crossover. To do so, we're going to create a set of real random numbers, for example, named alpha, and it contains alpha 1, alpha 2, up to alpha n. This is in the same size as x1, x2, y1, and y2. And we know that alpha i is a real valued random number in the range 0 to 1. And it is uniformly distributed in this range. And here we can define first offspring as this y1 i will be alpha i x1 i plus 1 minus alpha i x2 i. This is the first of a spring and y2 i will be alpha i x2 i plus 1 minus alpha i x1 i. And it is same as the binary uniform crossover, but here alpha is a continuous variable and y's and x's are also continuous variables so the whole process is the continuous version of the uniform crossover but this is the uniform crossover in continuous domain so we have uniform crossover and we can implement the uniform crossover in this way however for the reason to improve the exploration abilities of the algorithm Sometimes we can change this set to alpha i from minus, for example, gamma up to 1 plus gamma. We extend this range from left side and right hand side by a value of gamma. And minus gamma, negative gamma, is less than 0 by amount of gamma and 1 plus gamma is larger than 1 by a factor of gamma. So we are extending the range just to make possible, create of springs somehow different from their parents. And this improves the exploration ability of the genetic algorithm. And you can use this to improve the crossover operation. It can be helpful. However, a gamma must be a small number. Remember that. For example, 0.1 or one tenth. Okay, this is the uniform crossover in the continuous domain. Now let's talk about the mutation in continuous domain. 
we know that mutation changes and alters some decision variables so we have x and we're going to change this to x prime actually for example if we decide change the j element to x prime j then we can for example define xj prime as xj plus some random numbers and this random number has a probability distribution predefined one way is to use uniform distribution and that's drawing delta from a uniform distribution of for example negative epsilon up to epsilon and this ensures that delta will be always from negative epsilon minus epsilon up to epsilon and another option is using the gaussian or normal distribution and in this case we're going to draw delta from a normal distribution with zero mean and some variance a sigma squared here and this is a limited range mutation but this can be anything but this has more a concentration on the center but this is a uniform time and they have their own advantages and disadvantages here i'm going to use normal distribution and this is a very common choice in many evolutionary algorithms to perform mutation using normal distribution or using mutation steps drawn by gaussian or normal distribution okay we're going to use this but this variance is a special parameter is an important parameter named as step size this is a mutation step size and we can define this according to the range of decision variables and for making this better normally many algorithms start with a higher step size and then they decrease the value of step size as the algorithm goes forward and we'll do this in our implementation too so now we have the definition of crossover and mutation in the continuous domain and we're ready to implement these operations in matlab before we start implementing real coded genetic algorithm in matlab we need a sample problem to solve using the implemented genetic algorithm we're going to use the sphere function a well-known test function benchmark function in optimization as the problem we're going to solve and that's the minimizing the value of this function f sph of x and that equals to this value summation for i from 1 up to n and a square value the square of all members of the vector x all elements of the vector x and we know that the minimum value is zero and the optimal solution is the origin of this space and we know zero is the best value for our decision variables also the objective function the cost function here we're going to implement a sphere function and we're going to use the implemented genetic algorithm the real coded genetic algorithm to solve this problem and that's a well-known problem in the domain of optimization and that's simple enough to be discussed in a video tutorial okay let's define this problem and let's implement real coded genetic algorithm but before we start i'm going to create a folder here named binary ga and i'm going to move these codes inside this i'm going to make a copy of this folder and rename that to real code ga and i'm going to work on these and let's remove my crossover double point crossover and single point crossover because they are not useful anymore and i'm going to remove min one two okay and that's it we can start with these files first of all let's implement the sphere function the return variable is z and we have a sphere here which accepts a single parameter named x and we're going to return the summation of the squared versions of the elements of x 
sum of squares here as the output. And let's save this. We defined our problem. Let's change this here. The cost function is a function of x, which returns sphere x. Unlike the binary problem, unlike the binary space, here we need to specify the lower bound and upper bounds of variables. And 100 variable is much for a start. I'm going to use five decision variables here and I'm going to set the varmin, the lower bound of variables, as negative 10 and the varmax is positive 10. Remember that if you have different values for different decision variables, you can use matrices here, vectors here. I'll discuss that because in our previous video tutorial on particle swarm optimization, students have many many questions about this specific topic and they asked me that what if we want to specify different lower bounds and upper bounds for different decision variables what we can do i'm going to test this in this video tutorial and that's a general method you can use with any optimization algorithm any of codes found on yarpus.com okay we define the search space using these lines we define the number of decision variables and we define the range of those variables and all of them are from negative 10 up to 10. We have we are going to search for five real numbers in this range negative 10 up to 10 to minimize this cost function spherix and we know the result is zero obviously but we're going to test if GA can solve this problem or not and j parameters maxit and pop are here beta pc mu they are all the same almost same but we will add some other parameters too but for now i'm going to start implementation of our operators uniform crossover and mutation for uniform crossover we have the general structure here and i think it's enough but we must change the alpha here we have random integers from 0 to 1 but we must change this to have continuous values so we're going to generate random numbers from 0 to 1 with the same size as x and this will change our uniform crossover to real coded uniform crossover however if you want you can add a level of gamma to this to increase the efficiency and exploration ability of the algorithm we will do this in next step for now it's enough i think and for mutation we have a flag which tells us in which indices we're going to change the value of decision variables and here we must change the this line to change the mutation level however we need another parameter here sigma the step size i'm going to sigma here and I'm going to change this. We must check. We must change the value of x where the flag is true and have we must calculate the value of y where the flag is true but according to these rules. And we must add some real random numbers with normal distribution which has zero mean and sigma squared as its variance. So we're going to do this and let's implement this part y flag will be equal to x flag where the flag is true the y at those indices equals to x at those indices plus some random steps okay i'm going to add some random steps to this but what's this step it's a real random number with zero mean and variance equal to sigma squared to create a real random number with sigma squared as variance if for example we want to create this standard normal distribution we can use rand n but if we want to create this sigma squared as the variance but the mean value is zero still then we must multiply rand n by sigma value and if we want to add some mean to, then we must add mu 
plus sigma times rand n. And that's it. That's a key point. The output of rand n is a normal, standard normal number, standard normal distribution. And to add sigma squared as variance, you must multiply sigma, not sigma squared, to rand n. And if you want to add mean, you just add mu, the value of the mean, to the sigma times rand n. Okay, now we must use this notation, sigma times rand n. So we have sigma times rand n, but we have some flags here and we can create some real random numbers here. For example, we can create rand n with the same size as x and we can use r at those indices that flag is true and this is the step size and this will change the value of x in those indices in those locations that flag is true and it will use the parts of r and x that are corresponding to true values of this flag and that's it this will implement the mutation the real coded mutation with normal steps with gaussian steps so let's save this and we're ready to modify our genetic algorithm the main function to deal with real valued decision parameters okay for now we're extracting the information of problem but we know that this is not enough we must extract the varmin from problem and also varmax and here to create random solutions we must create real random solutions and to do this we're going to use unif rnd to create random numbers from var mean up to var max and the size is n var 1 by m var so i'm going to create 1 by n var also we can define var size as 1 by in var to use everywhere we need and we can use var size here so we create random numbers from varmin up to varmax with this size and this will create a random solution a random chromosome and then we evaluate this and we store the cost value here and we compare it to the best soul and here we compute the selection probabilities they are all the same we perform crossover but using uniform crossover and we perform mutation here but we must provide sigma as the step size so we must define sigma value also so i'm going to sigma here sigma is the params dot sigma and also we need to define sigma here so params dot sigma equal to for example 0 0.1 and if i go down i mutated the newly created of a spring we evaluate this and we compare to best solution ever found sort the population select the best part and store the record and have the iteration information that's it i think we've done and we can run the genetic algorithm you see the general structure of genetic algorithm is same, but operators and some minor modifications converted the binary genetic algorithm to real coded genetic algorithm. I'm going to run this APP1 and you see we have 21 as the first best cost at the end of the first iteration, but here we are very close to zero at the end of the hundredth iteration. And for example, out dot best soul is this. Almost they are all zeros. We have five zeros here, and you see the plot here. It's not very helpful from here, and we cannot distinguish the small values. To make this more human readable, I'm going to change plot to, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to comment this and let's change plot to semi log y. Semi log y is very similar to plot, but it plots the data in a semi log access frame 
and by y we tell that the y axis must have the logarithmic scale but x axis will be linear so if we run this code again app1 we'll get this and you see the improvement is more visible here and here we have this solution about 5.8 times by 10 to the power of minus 7 it's almost zero and if you check for out.best solve you'll get these decision variables and if you want to get those you can get these and these are almost zero very close to zero and also you can for example add the population and pop here and if you run this you get better results even and if you give genetic algorithm more time you will get better results app1 i'm going to run this and you see it's improving and it's almost zero and from this iteration it is very very close to zero and in this accuracy my computer did not distinguish it from zero so it displays zero but we know that it's not zero it is a numerical error but it's it's very 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 zero 9.8 times 10 to the power of negative 300 it's very small it's very close to zero it's the value of cost at the end of 914th iteration okay we've implemented genetic algorithm for a real coded domain and we can modify and improve the solutions for example in the uniform crossover part we can change the range of alpha to include other values for example let's set gamma equal to 0 0.1 and this can be another parameter if you wish you can pass this from here and you can use that and i'm going to use another number instead of this i'm going to use alpha equal to unif rnd from negative gamma from to one plus gamma and with this size size of x1 i commented this to make possible to return to previous version and this helps the exploration of the algorithm to be improved and let's define gamma as well we have a gamma parameter here and let's define this here gamma equals to params dot gamma and i'm going to add this here params dot gamma equals to 0 0.1 and that's it we implemented this too and let's rerun the algorithm and you get this i'm going to stop the running by hitting Control c and that's it we have the functional genetic algorithm for solving real coded optimization problems and that's it for now it's enough i think and we can continue with other topics there are some improvements which are available to apply to this code one of them is about the range of variables varmin and varmax for example after we apply uniform crossover on these parents and we are getting two results as office springs it is possible just because we have gamma here it's possible that these office springs in some positions in some chromosomes or genes go beyond the upper bound or lower than the lower bound and go outside of the feasible range of the variable or in mutation we are adding some random step sizes to the solution and it's possible that this value is less than varmin the lower bound or greater than the upper bound the varmax so we must check for the solutions after crossover or mutation but if you see the code after performing crossover we're not going to evaluate the solutions but after mutation we're going to evaluate the solutions so it is better to perform the check for bounds here right before the evaluation of cost function if you have evaluation here for example if you want to evaluate all of the office springs and then make copies of them and mutate the copy versions 
then you must check for the bounds of variables right before the evaluation expression so i'm going to check for the values for the bounds here to check for the bounds we must have this in mind that all variables must be larger than varmin and less than varmax so max between pop c l dot position that's the position or values of chromosomes and varmin we know that this must be greater than this in case of any invisibility or unexpected event this may be is less than var mean so the maximum value will be var mean and so this value the output of this comparison will not be less than var mean at all if position is the maximum so that's the position we have and if it is not we have var mean as output of this expression so let's set the value of position equal to this and this line of code says that we have position equal to maximum value among position and vermin if this is greater than vermin then it will be unchanged and in case this is less than vermin then vermin will be replaced the value which is invalid value so this line guarantees that the vermin condition will be true and this checks for the lower, lower bound so i'm going to check for variable bounds and similar to this the position will be the minimum value among position and var max we know that this position must be less than or at least equal to var max and if this is not the minimum value among position and var max then we will have var mean as the minimum of these two variables so the position will not go beyond var max so this will check for the upper bound as well as the this line which is responsible for applying the lower bound condition okay that's it this checks for the lower bound and upper bound conditions of the variables also if your variables have different ranges then it can be applied here and we can define varmin and varmax as arrays for example we have five variables here and we can set a negative 10 negative 10 negative 5 negative 1 and even 5 as the lower bound and 10 10 5 1 and 8 as upper bound so our first variable will be from negative 10 to 10 negative 10 to 10 the second variable negative 5 to 5 negative 1 to 1 and 5 to 8 and you know the minimum value of the cost function in this special condition will be 0 0 0 0 and 5 so 25 will be the minimum value of this problem we can check for this we can run the program here app1 and you see 25 is the optimum value of the problem and if we are not checking for the lower bound and upper bound then with this specific conditions then the algorithm will find wrong answers and we can check for this i'm going to have 100 iterations here and let's comment these values uh, sorry here i'm going to comment these lines and this time algorithm does not check for the bounds of the variables so i'm going to run this and you see this goes towards zero and if you check for the out that best so then you find that this is in range this is in range this is in range this is in range but this is not it cannot be less than five but if you bring back these lines and run the code you will get 25 again as the result and if you check for out dot best so then this is zero almost zero 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 these are all in the range and five 
as the best possible value for the fifth element of the solution, fifth gene, actually. And this is a very important part. And defining different ranges for variables is one of common questions among students. And I receive almost every, at least an email, which is about this particular problem and the way we can apply different ranges for variables in, for example, particle swarm or genetic algorithm or and cloning. Okay, that's it. We applied the ranges of variables and we changed the lower bound and upper bound of variables and we have now different ranges for different variables. And that's it. This improves the genetic algorithm. And remember that this modification is available to be done on other implementations, other algorithms. We have more than 20 algorithms implemented in YARPAS and they are available to download. And you can use this method, this technique to define different ranges for different variables.